Hey y'all, it's Michael, and the next short story collection I'm going to be reading is Exolation by Ted Chiang. If you saw my previous short story collection review, um, mm, you can see why I'm choosing this. Now, Ted Chiang wrote one of my favorite short stories that I read this year. Like, I thought it was a masterpiece of a short story, and that's um, Stories of Your Life and Other Story Story of Your Life. And oh my God, that that short story is I'm saying it. It's a masterpiece. I love this. Like, I thought. If anything, this would give me hope. So I am super excited to read this because if at least one thing, like I'm gonna at least like, at least like, not even love, just like one, just one short story. So what I'll do is after each and every single short story, I'll let y'all know what I think about each one. And then at the end, I'll do a collective overall thought. So yeah, let's go. I finished the first short story called The Merchant and the Alchemist's Gate. Uh, this was really good. Um, I really enjoyed it. This is about uh, our narrator who is meeting up with um, a uh, an, a merchant. And come to find out this merchant has the these doors where if you jump into it, you can go uh, years into the future. And then this story is like a story within a story. Oh, it's so good. This is like a story within a story because um, the merchant starts telling stories of how the door works. Consequences and the actions that people take with because of the door. Oh, it's so good. One thing that I really do enjoy about um, Qin Yang's writing, he is able to convey these, these scientific science fiction, sci-fi, fantasy uh, things and do it really interestingly. Like the story like progresses involving the doors. I was like, oh, this is so cool. Like I wanted to keep reading and I wanted more. Um, but when we get to the end, it's like a conclusive ending. Um, and this is a really good introduction and it re really reminds me of why I am, uh, you know, I'm a big fan. At this point, like I'm a really big fan. I, I, I thought such a great story. All right, so I just finished reading the um, titled short story, Exhalation. <sighs> okay, so coming into this short story collection, I knew that this was probably going to be an incredible story. And I say that because in his previous short story collection, um, Story story of Your Life and Others, that was the best short story in there, period. Um, but here, well, this is only the second one, but wow, y'all, this is one of my favorite short story, <laughs> short stories that I've read this year. It was in incredible. This story is about air. <laughs> like, it, that is such a weird thing to say, but this story is about air and we follow this narrator. You don't know what is going on until the very, very end. And he's talking about, he, she, them, I, I don't know. Um, this, I'm gonna say he, this narrator is talking about um, lungs and how, uh, I don't, see, this is the thing. This story is very layered in a sense that it could be literally about anything um because it while it talks about like the beginning of life um you could have this idea that it's like humans but then there's this idea also that the narrator could also be a robot the narrator could be a leaf the narrator could be anything um because air is essential to all creatures <laughs> but then it also talks about because anything essentially could be metaphorically met like even though it's talking about it has a part where it talks about the brain and that could technically be about anything essentially like any animal um but the way it dissects and shows the way that the 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 mind works and the way the lungs work and these illusions that it gives oh my god no it's so and then it talks about um what is it called there's like theories about um how life began like you know there's um there's like the big bang theory but then there's also what what was it called it's like a the clock clockwork like how um there's a, also a theory that life is perceived through a clock like some sort of mechanics behind the world and how it works that's kind of like how if you look watch game of thrones um which a lot of you probably do uh that's why there's a lot of gears and whatnot because i believe that martin derived that from that theory of like how the world works like a clock like there's a there's like a mechanism and there's like gears and go go gogs cogs and whatnot that's controlling the world so oh, yeah it was so good oh my god this oh, this story was incredible like i am i am so happy and just has so much <laughs> enthusiasm because coming from the last short story collection this is is on full gear like oh, i just ted chi yang might be my favorite short story writer right now because Wow.
It was incredible. Incredible. I'm so happy. I finished the next uh, short story called The Life Cycle of Software Objects. Um, first off, this is incredibly long, like really long. It's over a hundred pages, which at this point, is it even called a short story? But this is about Anna and Derek. It's in this future and basically they have these things called Digians and they're almost like a software slash pet slash computer slash being like there's it's a lot of things let me quickly talk about length of short stories i think a length of a short story should be justifiable um so it could be either one page <laughs> which i have read some one page short stories obviously but also they could be like this length it's at this point it's a novella at my in my opinion it is a novella um and you know what this one was actually not that bad i wouldn't say it's my favorite out of the collection so far i mean this is the third short story in here i think the length is justifiable if anything and i say this because the beats and like the way the story progresses it really does talk about software and like digital things um become and evolve and turn into all sorts of things because it starts off as this little little fun small um project eventually turns into this huge thing that uh has that changed over time the morality and the question of like the, the questions that come up with what do we do with these things that we made and that we created. They're almost like pets at this point and you know, bullet, come here. Okay, he's not coming. <laughs> but it's almost like they become a pet and it's someone that you really care for. It's almost at the halfway point where it's they start to question um, their creation. And I, I really did enjoy that part. And I finished the story, Daisy's Pet and Automatic Nanny. Um, this one was actually not bad. This is about a man named Daisy, who basically makes a like a robot um, nanny to take care of his son, him wanting to make this robot nanny to take like to sell it to others, brings up this question about like nature and nurture and about like raising your kid. Um, it did have a little bit of like, I guess a twist in the middle, which which I was like, mm, I find it surprising, but yeah, I liked it. All right, I just finished reading the short story, The Truth of Fact, The Truth of Feeling. This was so good. Like what I love most about Ching Yang in general is like one of this is a perfect example of that. It's just his mind. I stand. I am standing. I love it. Well, there's two stories going on essentially. Um, first there's um story about this our main narrator and about his daughter Nicole, and then there's this um new technology called Remem and Re Remem. Oh, the Michael <laughs> Remem. Um, have y'all watched that? black mirror episode where um people could like see like their memories like as a tv and they could like rewind and like see what they saw and type stuff like that it's basically that so i'm wondering when ching yang wrote that story because then like one some somehow someone got inspired by that like or vice versa but the protagonist is basically contemplating about using rent remem and having doubts about it the second story involves um a older civilization and basically these white european well they just said europeans but i'm assuming they're white uh, <laughs> these white europeans are coming in um they're basically colonizing quote unquote but there's this really contemplative in regards to both of the stories like and how people um collect memories because in the other story it's about um the other character sabe and he's learning learning how to write and like why these europeans are writing and like the the way that his um civilization like talks uh about like and how they project like history and story it is like it's one of those stories where there's so much going on and i think chi yang does a really really great job of navigating the topic um and within this main topic of like memory and story, there's like branching other things that you could talk about. It's it's quite a lengthy story, I'm not gonna lie. It's All right, so I finished the next two short story. The first one is called The Great Silence. This one was actually really good. Now, I don't know when Xin Yang wrote this one in particular because it actually, actually coincides with, um, remember that story a while back? Um, I think it was actually a few months ago where the parrot from like Rio 2, you know, that blue maca, I think it's called Blue Macaw. Um, that bird um, recently got extinct. Um, this is basically about that. Um, and it actually was really good. I thought it was really um, powerful. I, I really liked it. The next one is called Omphilus. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Omphilus. This 
Oh, wasn't really good. This is about um, our main character, Dorothea. Dorothea? Dortha? Dorothea? I don't know. Dorothea. Without giving too much away because the revelation is so good. It is so good. Uh, but she's basically a... This person is a um, arch 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 archaeologist. So she actually is very religious also. This, this deals with um, a higher being. To, uh, that she prays to uh look she calls him she calls this higher being lord so i'm just gonna go with that uh so she's an archaeologist and she this is hard to talk about without giving a lot away because um i think what really makes this work in my opinion is the surprise surprises there's a lot of surprises in this but once again this is why i love teaching so much his his ideas, his mind, his, it's so powerful. Uh, this, the idea of, this is so hard to talk about without giving it away because it re it relies on religion and science. And I love stories that deal with those topics at the same time um, because I think it is being a little bit, uh, like for me anyways, because I love science. I am religious, but not in like a way that like, religious religious you know what i'm saying like those hardcore religious people are um and this was this really balances that idea of how to be very science science focused but also have um some sort of religion and some sort of higher calling that you answer to and especially that point in your life when it starts to mix and things start to get really murky and that's what I really enjoyed about this. The writing is, is very strong. The main narrator is very developed in this one just because you understand like I knew I was gonna like it. Like the beginning lines of this was um, so good. It really set the mood and I think it's just like a great cap to what the story is really about when it says, Lord, I place myself in your presence and ask you to shine your light into my heart as I look back onto this day so that I may see more clearly your grace in everything that has happened. It's really good. It's one of my favorite short stories in here so far, next to Exhalation. But yeah, I really liked it. Just, it was, it's so well executed. It's, it's really good. It's, it's really good. I finished the last short story on here called Anxiety is the Dizziness of Freedom. And then I also read the um, off notes um, after it. Uh, Y'all, this short story was so good. It was so good. Oh, just the, uh, y'all, his mind. His mind it seemed very Mac Black Mirror-ish, which was actually like, okay, it's very glary, which was like really cool. So it's in this world um, where people have these things called prisms and this prisms basically lets you talk to someone else um, in another timeline. So let's say instead of me going to the coffee shop today, I came home straight away. And so I could actually talk to that person and like who went home instead of going to the coffee shop, like, that type of thing theory about like you know multiple timeline theory that type of um <laughs> topic i went into this obviously not knowing anything and the surprises the surprises that the story shows oh my goodness it was so great reading a thriller like actually just like it was so thrillish because what happens is oh, it was so good because you can actually like especially towards the end you can see you can have like layers and like theories of like what happened. Oh, I was so good. Ah, oh! and these concepts of just what Qin Yang brings to the table, like not only like multiple theories. What is faith? Like is faith real? Are are the are decisions that we're making truly our decisions? Is there such a thing as um what do you call it? Ah, oh, it's, it's escaping my mind. It's escaping my mind. Do we truly have destiny? Like. Oh, so good i really enjoyed it yay so i'm gonna give my final thoughts on exhalation by ted Ching. now if you saw all the clips before this uh then you would know i love this i thought it was amazing i think i enjoyed this just as much and probably a little bit more than um his previous short story collection because even though his like my least favorite one out of all of this it's still pretty good in my opinion um and there's so many good short stories in here like from the beginning to the end it's also curated really well just the flow and everything i just i stand i am standing for touching i oh god i i just <sighs> Let me calm down. But yeah, so my favorite obviously on here is Exhalation. 
duh. Um, the last one was amazing. Anxiety is the business of freedom. Omphalus was really great. The Great Silence was good. Just the whole collection overall was really good. I mean, even the Merchant of Death and the Alchemist Gate. And I didn't mention this in the previous clip, but the last part where he um he tells notes about his um short stories and like his inspirations it's so insightful and it's really interesting because some parts of like what his main focus is in according to the story notes of like each story some of the parts that he talks about i actually didn't i i got something different from it compared to what he was um actually uh thought about so i thought that was really cool because then that means that the story is so layered that he knows oh, it's so good it is so good. I would recommend this. I would start off with his other short story um, and then you can read into this so that way you can have like, you know. Because I feel as though compared to his short story collection, like um, his previous one, this, I it has more of, of a grasp. Like it seems a little bit more streamlined, um, especially not even with the stories themselves, but just like the curation and like the flow of everything. I just, it was, it was amazing. Either way, whatever, just pick up, pick up something by Tai Yang. I will seek out more of his work if you release anything, but man, I loved it. I, point blank period, I loved it. This, it was so good. I, it was so good. It was so good. It was so good. So if you read this short story collection in particular or any of his works, or if you've even watched Arrival, let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts. Let's talk about it in the comments because I just want to gush, gush so much more about him. Until then, I'll see you guys till next time. Bye! At the end of these, I'll let y'all know what the next short story collection that I'm reading and that's going to be Men Without Women by Haruki Murakami.